Hey guys, so what is this video? Well, it's just an update really of the law for the Vermeer as a race. Um, I've noticed uh, a bit of trouble with my new Vermeer army to come up with motivations and where they sit in the new realms as far as Age of Sigma goes. So I've uh, added a few bits to the law to sort of bring them into the new additions. Um, it's only my own thoughts, but just before the uh, the law itself begins, I'm letting you know that this has a lot of other elements from earlier law and stuff which I will be uh, quoting pretty much. Uh, so credit where credit's due in, in that sense. Otherwise, let's get to the rewrite. The Familiar. To the isolated and lonely settlements on the fog-shrouded fen and swamps of the old world during the time of myth, the Vermeer were creatures of horrific legend, cold and cruel and stronger than any man with a single baleful eye atop a pointed snout bristling with jagged fangs. Long ago, before the age of myth, all the world was fog-shrouded and dark. The Vermeer ravaged the old world in mighty warbands tearing down the cities of the elves and struggling in bloody conflict with the wild men who dwelt in the lands that would millennia later be forged into the empire under the god king Sigma. For centuries they roared their praises to the gods of chaos and many creatures, now long forgotten, were butchered upon the altars to the dark gods. Then their time came to an end. The world changed and the fickle lords of chaos abandoned them to a slow, lingering death amid their crumbling fortresses and lost glory. For untold millennia, the now dwindling Vermeer were reduced to plotting petty raids from their forgotten strongholds and nursing their bitter hatred for those that ruled where once they were masters. These raids, shrouded in supernatural mists, would fall upon and destroy villages and raise entire towns, the Vermeer taking with them only the captured women, to be used in the atrocious propagation of their race. For the Vermeer were rumoured to be part demon, part human. Their fortresses, forbidding craggy piles of rock crudely built in the semblance of human castles, were wreathed in a constant fog. Vermeer communities were divided into four castes. The lower caste, that of the Shell or Thralls, a caste of servitors and menials. Next, the ranks of the Fim warriors, to which the Vermeer nobility belongs, and from which the race takes its name. Finally, there are the Dirarch or Bale Fiends, a small but powerful caste of priests or mages, and most feared of all, the Merg or hags, the witch queens that rule over them. Females are very rare in Vermeer society, being born perhaps once a century in any stronghold. When a female is born and is usually killed, unless the Merg in charge of the stronghold is old and near death. In these cases it will be raised by the Merg as a daughter and successor. For if a Merg dies without a successor, the stronghold will inevitably fall into ruin the Vermeer turning on each other, or abandoning it to seek another. But that was then. In the eight mortal realms the Vermeer have existed as an afterthought for both mortals and gods. When the end times came and the world was broken, those Vermeer who still clung to the old ways, praying and sacrificing to the dark gods, could deny no longer that they were forsaken by their once masters. This was the time of the Great Waning. The Mergs descended into apathy, and the Dirarchs had no answers for their kin. The raids all but stopped across the mortal realms, and it appeared that the Cyclopean race would willingly fade into myth. The precise event, or figure, perhaps, that ended the Great Waning is uncertain, but what is known is that the Fermia are making their presence felt once more within the mortal realms, and in much greater numbers. The mists roll inexorably and on the fringes of the realms, 
where once more mortal souls are fearful to tread. And what's more, these are no raiders. Great mists stalk over entire kingdoms, where once small raiding parties terrorize certain regions, jealously guarding their strongholds and their most precious mirk. Now great hordes of Famir stalk across ever-growing domains, leaving nothing but mist and bog in their wake. The Merg, sometimes several of them, are seen directing their demonic kin in battle. The strongholds have united, and they are on the move. Most alarming are the reports of the dark purpose behind these growing incursions, for not only are settlements, towns, and entire landscapes purged by the misk shrouded hosts, but so too are any realm gates they come across. Indeed, the Fermir seem to be specifically drawn to these portals in all their sizes and forms, and their purpose is clear, to destroy them all. What little is known of their ultimate goal comes to us from a peculiarity of habit. You see, some of the Fermir, despite abandoning the prospect of propagating their race any further, still seem to relish in the capturing of prisoners out of little more than routine. Those that manage to escape the demonic creatures and the wild mist-covered fens that surround them tell a dark tale indeed. Some say that during the time of the great waning Fermir turned to a new god. Others that their sense of abandonment and isolation itself created this new deity. Perhaps it is the isolation itself that they now worship. But whatever the case, it has many names. The Void, the Nothing, the Great Mist, the Hollow One, among the most common. The Fermir, tired of lingering on the precipice of extinction for so long, now welcome it, their one driving purpose is to bring about the same isolation, the same emptiness and eventual decline to all mortal beings. To this end, they seek out every realm gate. These magical junctions connecting the mortal realms are then severed through mystic rituals and strange beasts the Hollow One has gifted to the Merg. Once every realm is isolated from the others, the Great Mist will descend on each shrouding them from even the gods, and all of the races will be welcomed into nothing. With their numbers so greatly diminished during the Great Waning, even the merged hosts of the Fermir could not hope to face up against the hordes of chaos or mortal gods directly. Most of the realm gates, already extinguished, are lesser or long forgotten gates, but the Fermir are in no hurry and as the realms lie contested among the races and gods that vie for dominance, the Fermir creep as a faint mist over the fringes of the mortal realms, slowly, inexorably, snuffing out the lifelines between them, their tendrils creeping closer and closer towards their eventual goal. Perhaps their enemies will join them in achieving their ultimate purpose. For when the last few gates remain, won't the mortal and chaos realms destroy themselves fighting over them? And then, when they draw their last exhausted breaths upon those bloody battlefields, the mist will roll in one final time. So there you have it. It's uh, not exactly comprehensive. I know that's basically the... Um introduction I guess um, the idea of the Fermir creeping like a mist over all of the mortal realms and cutting off those realm gates which everyone relies on so much brings them back into a force that will have a notable effect on the Age of Sigma sort of universe and can put them into contention with each and every race um, you know at times maybe uh, some races being happy to see some realm gates severed, uh, you know, especially if chaos or someone takes over them. But eventually, if they're ignored for long enough while the other realms fight each other, then it's sort of a creeping end that will come to everyone, all of the all of the mortal realms, 
even the Chaos Realms included, because Chaos will be shut off from what they want, controlling in the realms as well. Um, everyone's cut off, and then just the the slow decline. Once all the realms be uh, are cut off, then uh, and the gods can't assist the elves, mankind, the dwarves, and all that sort of stuff. Then the the sort of decline of each of these realms takes place, and the Fermir pick off the survivors driving all of the mortal realms and then eventually themselves into extinction, which is pretty much where they've been relegated to as far as Warhammer and Age of Sigmar go anyway. So they're kind of like, instead of changing their fate, they're making everyone else join them in it, um, is basically the motivation there. I'm not going to go into any more detail, um, like the lists, the unit entries that I use for a Fermir um, army. I'm just using them with the destruction, overall destruction rules. Um, we haven't, they haven't been given any uh, War Scroll Battalions yet. Um, I might come up with some ideas to use in that and some items to use in that. But let me know what you think. Um, and if you're interested anymore, I've been asked by a couple of people to uh, put some of these storylines, these laws um, together somewhere where they can get to them. So I'm just going to throw it up here. Um, if it was any good uh, to you, any use to you uh, for any reason, do let me know. Um, if you change anything, um, adopt anything, uh, swap anything out, yeah, like and comment below. And uh, But that's it for me. I've got another 40k uh, custom list with all of its lore to chuck up here, uh, once again as a request. So I'm going to get started on that. But that is the, uh, the Fermir, yeah, Age of Sigma edition. Uh, thanks, guys, and uh, catch you next time.